Most people don't realize that a half an inch of ice can add up to 500 pounds of weight wow. to a tree. That's crazy. And so if you have a limb hanging over your house, it's like having a baby grand piano hanging over the top of oh, your wow. house. Well, I'm David. I'm with Rams Air Group of Keller Williams. This is Phil, an inspector locally here in the area. We use him quite a bit, and he's uh, he pulls back the shades and lets all the sunlight in. Really does a good job, and, and so we try to. Yeah, yeah. So we brought him in. He's gonna kind of answer a few questions when it comes to owning a home. You have a lot of different maintenance and, and things like that. As the seasons change, some of those maintenance things change. So um, tell us a little bit about what some some common. Uh, common maintenance things that you can do just just in general low cost things that you can do well, well this time of year you know there's there's some things that are really specific for winter months and going come as we're approaching spring again which thank god that's right around yeah. the corner uh in the winter months the very first thing you want to do is, is exactly what i do i'm an inspector i come in and pick things apart very very detailed but you don't have to be that detailed get you a pen and a paper walk around and write down the obvious things that you see are wrong take your blinders off and realize that your house is not perfect, none of them are, and just walk around the exterior, look for ground that dips back in towards your house, look for bushes that are touching your siding, those things are gonna rot the siding, look for displaced siding, look for broken windows, cracks in your foundation that you don't remember seeing there before. So all those kind of things are real important to kind of take an eye on. If you haven't already done it, unhook your garden hoses, make sure if you can shut the water off from the inside, get that shut off. We do have some more freeze coming. So all those things you can do right off the bat. That's just what we call general, general walk around inspection. Do it on the exterior, the interior. You don't have to crawl in the attic or on the roof if you don't feel comfortable with that, but just get a basic punch list of things you need to do. And, that, and that's a great place to start. And then probably the second thing that's really important, we get a lot of ice storms in our region. And so ultimately um, what I recommend each of you do is have an emergency kit already in place uh, and have a plan of action. What are we going to do if we lose power? Uh, are we going to rely on our fireplace if that's the case, which that's a whole other thing we'll get into later on, but uh, what are we going to do to heat our home? How are we going to stay yeah. alive, if you will? What's our, what's our plan in order to be able to stay safe and, and comfortable in, in the extreme circumstances? That may involve having a generator backup. That may involve just having some place you can go. That may involve having an emergency fund where you can go get a hotel room in Kansas mm -hmm. City. Whatever that is, maybe you go to the Caribbean. Yeah. I mean, whatever your thing <laughs> is. Uh, you just want to make sure you have a plan in place because as we get in a, in a, a situation where we're stressed, we tend to lose the fine motor skills and the fine thought skills where we can figure those things out then. If you already have it in place, you just pull out the plan and you go, here's what we do. And it's a lot That's easier good. everybody. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about exterior of the home. I mean, just some of the things you want to look for, maybe heat leaving the house, if snow hits the roof, is it melting in certain spots, some different things like that. Sure. Uh, what are some things we should be looking for? Well, this is, uh, we have this challenge in my family, drive around and look at roofs. If you, if it's, there's snow on roofs and you drive past a house that doesn't have snow on the roof, that means the insulation is probably poor okay. or displaced in the attic. And so the heat is allowed to pass past the insulation. It's getting to the roof surface and it melts the snow. And that's essentially what's happening. So if you're looking at your house and there's snow on everybody's roof and yours doesn't, <laughs> Guess what? Probably, Probably needs some insulation. Some insulation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's certainly on the exterior something to pay attention to. Um, tree limbs are a big thing. Again, in our region, we have a lot of ice storms, heavy snows. Most people don't realize that a half an inch of ice can add up to 500 pounds of weight wow. to a tree. That's crazy. And so if you have a limb hanging over your house, it's like having a baby grand piano hanging over the top of oh, your wow. house. And if that falls on it, I hate to say, uh, <laughs> Beethoven is going to mess your house up. Uh, it's not going to go well. So it's just really important if you haven't already done it or if you have the weather permitting, like you have a decent day and the ability to get those limbs cut back away from the roof line, they're going to hang down. Even, even just a low lying limb, if it's got that much weight on, it's going to hang lower. Now wind blows and it brushes your shingles and rips all the granules off. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of damage on roofs like that. So that's certainly something you can, you can take care of in the exterior. Gutters and downspouts, obviously, um, pay attention to where they're going. We, we always say six feet away from the house is best. But in the winter months, it's also important to watch 
the gutters and downspouts that are flowing over concrete surfaces. That creates a major slip hazard. Uh, people get hurt, elderly fall all the time, going out to get the mail, and their gutter goes across their sidewalk. Next thing you know, mm. we've got a health, con health condition. So pay attention to that. Again, the roof, um, we, we talked about it briefly earlier. Make sure those water spigots are all shut off. And, uh, and if you have a garden hose, I always recommend storm inside or in the basement, someplace where they're not going to sit there and freeze because it'll eventually just crack that rubber and, right. and it's all over. Right. So that's the exterior for the most part. Okay. Well, so on the uh, interior of the house, I mean, when you're walking through, obviously, you can feel if there's, you know, cold air getting in around a window or, sure. or anything like that. What's some stuff that we can do? Um, I'm thinking cost effective things like uh, changing your filter or some things to look at where heat might be exiting your house that you don't even know about. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, that kind of gets into a couple things. One is the, what I would consider the poor man's way to do it. You just literally walk along with your hand around the edges of your windows and you'll feel it. If it's cold, it's right. cold. It's okay to feel coldness around the edge of a window. That's pretty common. If you actually feel air moving, that's okay. when there's a real problem. Okay. That's that's allowing uh, allowing air in, and it's just gonna it's gonna kill your energy yeah. efficiency. Uh, so I think one thing you could do is certainly go around and do it that way. Um, I mean, I've heard of people walking around with a candle. Uh, I wouldn't suggest <laughs> that. Candles are a big cause of fires this time of year. Uh, we. One of the services we offer, uh, and I don't do it a bunch, but I have a really expensive thermal imaging camera. If there's a question that you have some efficiency problems, mm -hmm. we can go through with that camera and I can show you literally, like you're missing a piece of insulation right here and you're probably missing some right here and you have air seeps around this light and this window's got a crack right here along the edge. And, yeah. and that camera shows you vividly where those problems That's are. That's awesome. And it, and it can detect some water leaks and things like that as well. It, it's not x-ray vision, it's not perfect, but it certainly allows us to see a temperature change uh, that we couldn't see with the human eye. So that's one thing that's out there that's available and, and I don't necessarily have to do it. You can buy a thermal imaging camera, uh, but we do offer that and that's something that I think is really good if you're, especially if you're buying an older home and you're going to be doing some renovations mm -hmm. Again, there you're going to end up with a bare roof. Yeah, <laughs> like we yeah. talked about yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. No insulation. So, uh, other things you can do inside the house, and this is really important if you burn wood, keep your chimney clean. You know, I can't stress that enough. Just burning a hot. I have people say all the time, "Well, I run such hot fires that I'm not worried about it," but you get creosote in there, and that is such a fire hazard. And also, a lot of the homes in our area are older homes, and most of those fireplaces are not lined properly, right. and so. The degrade, it degrades the, the mortar within the interior of the fireplace so much, so many house fires are caused by that. Fire gets out and it gets into a wall and you don't know it until the fire truck shows up. Mm. And, uh, or worst case, the ambulance shows yeah. up. So uh, I can't stress it enough. Um, if you have a fireplace and you're gonna be utilizing that on a regular basis, get the thing cleaned on a regular basis before you ever use it for the season, get it cleaned because even if you haven't burned anything, wasps, bats, all kinds of stuff love to live in those and they're all flammable. So we don't want to have a flying burning bat. Yeah. Those are bad. I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, other things you can do in the house. Uh, you obviously can go around and feel for things. Uh, we can do thermal imaging. Um, ceiling fans. Most people don't realize it, some people do. You can reverse them, and when you reverse them, it changes the direction of the air. Obviously, uh, we wanna bring that warm air from the ceiling back down in the winter months instead of, pull in the, on the summer, we wanna push that warm air up, get it away from mm -hmm. us. Uh, so by reversing the fan, that's what it's doing, essentially. It's, it's giving you a little, a little boost to your heating right. system. Uh, make sure those filters are clean in your furnace. The furnace runs almost nonstop in the wintertime. Yep. Uh, a lot of people have heat pumps as well, so that's going to be your outside unit will run down to a certain temperature when your inside unit kicks on. But uh, keep those those clean. If you're if you have any question about your furnace, just get the furnace maintenance. You know, have a HVAC tech come out, go through it, make sure everything looks like it's operational. I open them a lot of times and find corrosion even in a brand new furnace mm. because a condensate line has started leaking, and had that been caught earlier on we wouldn't have a big rust hole in the bottom of, right. of the furnace. Right. So all those kind of things can be done. Um, two other things real quick on, on the interior of a house. 
these are things you can you can watch for. Um, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. I go in houses every day that don't have any. Mm -hmm. They don't have any. I'm saying that again. They don't have any. If you love your family, do me a favor. Get on Amazon right now. Buy you a multi pack. Put a, a carbon monoxide smoke detector in the hallway. Every bedroom is supposed to have one. You can get on the National Fire Protection Agency site. It'll show you exactly where they're supposed to be. But just please get something in the house. So many deaths happen every year because they didn't even know there was a fire occurring. This time of year, people use space heaters. They use extension cords on space heaters, which is the worst thing you can do. The extension cord will get hot to the touch. That is not good. That isn't a great heating source. Right, right. Uh, it's, it's a convection oven at that point. If you've ever seen the inside of a toaster oven, that's what that extension cord is doing. So we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So in the end, what we want to see is uh, your furnace maintained properly to where you're able to distribute heat throughout your house properly and not require right. a bunch of individual space right. heaters. If you're having to do that, maybe talk to an electrician about installing some baseboard heaters, something that's designed for that purpose that's <laughs> hardwired in. Uh, so carbon monoxide smoke detectors to make sure that if there is a problem, you know about it. And lastly, in your basement, this is, this is something people kind of forget about. And we mark every tiny little crack in a foundation, even the most minor of cracks. And this time of year is really important to go back and look at those and follow them. Make some little marks on it with a magic marker because, again, this time of year as things are starting to freeze and they're getting ready to warm up, that's when you're going to see cracks move. You're going to see lateral displacement. And as snow melts, I was just in a house yesterday. Water's coming in through a blocked wall. Mm. It's a painted wall. It doesn't even look like you can't even see a crack. Water's <laughs> coming in. So it will find its way in. And, and if we don't keep an eye on those crack areas, you end up, again, the house I was in yesterday had a lot of mold. And that's something we want to make sure we, uh, yeah. we avoid that problem as well. So. Right. That's, that's kind of the interior of the house. I know there's a lot there, but in the end, some of it is common sense. Some of it is kind of out, of out of sight, out of mind, like the smoke detectors. You see them there, but when was the last time you pushed the button? You know, does it beep? If it doesn't, change the battery. If that doesn't fix it, change, change the detector. Right. Well, um, any other concerns you can think of this time of year? You know, the only other thing that I would say is this time of year, it's, it's really common to see radon levels raise. And a lot of people say, what on earth is even radon? Uh, some people have never even heard of it. Radon gas is a, it's a radioactive gas. It's totally natural. It's no different than uh, any other gas that comes out of the earth. And under normal circumstances, it exits the ground, goes into the air, dissipates, and everything's fine. This time of year, as the ground freezes, there becomes a crust over it, especially if there's snow or ice, that radon gas can't get out naturally. And so what happens is in our homes, we see the levels rise. Why is that a concern? Radon is the number one cause of lung cancer in the United States. Mm -hmm. Over 26,000 cases a year. Um, if you're a smoker, it's the number two cause of lung cancer. So uh, with that said, um, you know, we offer the testing. I know many other inspectors in town do the same thing. Uh, I think it's just important. Knowledge is power. Um, you know, radon test ranges anywhere from $125, $150, something like that. If you haven't had your house tested for radon, people say, well, my house is a new house. I'm not worried about it. Sometimes those are worse. They've mm -hmm. disturbed the soil recently. Um, or my old house, we've lived there for 40 years. We're not worried about it. Well, if you don't know, you don't know. Right. Uh, if you if you knew you had a carbon monoxide leak or potential carbon monoxide leak, you would want to know. Yeah. And, Absolutely. and it would affect you negatively as well. Same with this. So knowledge is power. So that's something you certainly want to look, uh, look into if you haven't already done. So uh, I just left the house with high rate on, yeah. um, you know, yeah. so it's there and it's a beautiful newer home uh, yeah. that you would have never suspected, but it just, it's, it is what it is. We didn't put it there. It just, yeah. we just detect that it is. Uh, and then lastly, um, you know, the environmental side of things, uh, which is, what we consider things that are uh, natural, if you will, things that are beyond human, right. we can't just go make it yeah. necessarily, uh, is, is a lot of molds we start to see happening as spring approaches. Again, we talked about water intrusion. Now we've had walls that have been really cold and they start to sweat as temperatures are changing on the exterior and it's not uncommon to see mm -hmm. molds and mildews start to form in basements, crawl spaces, and things like that. So just be aware of it. 
make sure things are properly ventilated and uh, if you don't already have a dehumidifier in your basement uh, you know consider getting one if you do feel like it's got a high humidity level and just be diligent about taking care of your home and your yeah. environment that you live in and that'll protect your family and ultimately that's <clears throat> the Absolutely. goal of this video is to uh, educate and to try to encourage people yeah. to just uh, uh, you know step up their game a little bit yeah. and uh, make sure their family stays safe and happy and healthy absolutely well phil i greatly appreciate you coming in and, and sitting with us a little bit so hopefully sure. that was informative to you guys uh, it was definitely informative to me uh, a homeowner myself I, a lot of this stuff you know I'll, just kind of goes right over your head and you don't think about it so uh, if you have any other questions something maybe we didn't touch on uh, feel free to reach out to myself anyone on our team or or phil himself i mean a great resource to have and, and yeah very yep. thankful well, hey, thank you for having me. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely.